Welcome to Opalis TV. Today I'm in Chicago together with Ernest Jafarian. He's the founder, the CEO and the Chief Investment Officer of Efficient Capital, which is a specialist in the CTA space. Ernest set up the company in 1999 and he started his professional career in the future space in 86. So Ernest, you run this company for a while. You've been in the CTA and the managed futures and the future space for a number of years. Tell me a bit in detail. What did you do particularly? How did you set up efficient capital and what's the mission of the company? I grew up in Eugene, Oregon, and it was exactly January 1st, 1986. I climbed on a plane, flew to Chicago, a red eye, and uh, went to work at CRT, Chicago Research and Trading. That was at the time the world's largest proprietary options trading firm of listed options. Uh, I literally did not know what an option are, but I went right to the floor, started clerking, and within a few months, uh, was the lead market maker in U.S. Treasury bond options at the CBOE. Uh, that was a great experience. Uh, CRT was a great firm. I was one of those guys that yelled and screamed and waved my arms. Uh, that's going to be history. But I used to say that in one day of trading on the floor, you got a year's worth of trading experience. I, shall I say, privileged to, to trade through Black Monday and all of those kinds of events. If you know anything about options trading, you know that there are two things that are really critical. First is uh, real-time risk management, and second is using meaningful mathematical models. So that got drilled into me as really important elements in running a trading program. CRT asked me to leave the floor and help them get the over-the-counter treasury options business up and running. So in uh, 89, I started uh, going to New York City where they had a proprietary trading desk and treasuries and were a primary dealer. That also was a tremendous experience and I watched the proprietary trading desk with, with great interest and I, and I came to the conclusion that, that two things were true. Uh, one is there really is such a thing as trader talent. I mean these folks were really good at making money just by trading the markets. And the second is they did a great job of diversifying the types of trading of each of the, the traders. So if one guy had a bad day Another guy had a good day, net, net. It turned into a very, very strong profit center for the firm. After that 18-month uh, stint, I came back to Chicago. They were selling the company to Nations Bank, but the sale wasn't done. And they literally said, just find something meaningful to do. We'll have you do the same sort of thing in currencies or energy that you were doing in treasuries. And I came up with this idea with some help from others to create a virtual proprietary trading desk. So... Instead of hiring people and bringing them into the company, just finding people that were trading independently and giving them trading line authorization. And I wanted specific types of traders. I wanted traders who traded the futures markets because we had memberships. We could manage the risk. We could see the trades real time. I wanted people that were trading with no directional bias, not counting on beta, but really just on trading skill to whatever degree possible. And that led me to find out there was this whole CTA space that I really didn't know even existed. So I got very fascinated with that space. I started reading everything I could read about the space. I started interviewing managers. And I started building mathematical models to allocate to individual traders as if they were just return streams. Uh, the question really was, can you build a portfolio mathematically that really performs well? I was very surprised to see that a disciplined mathematical approach towards running a multi-manager portfolio actually outperformed the product that was in the marketplace at the time. And uh, so I became even more interested in the space. I started talking to management about launching a proprietary program inside of the firm. Two things in my study really moved me aggressively into this direction from a career standpoint. In my reading, I, I, I came across the work of John Lintner, 
which is well known, Harvard professor who basically concluded that any portfolio of stocks and bonds would benefit by adding managed futures. Uh, the world would be a better place today if people had believed it back then. It's been proven over and over since then. But that was groundbreaking at the time. And another book that was really influential was uh, Peter Bernstein's Capital Ideas, where he traced the history of the capital markets. And I thought a lot about the whole concept of the efficient frontier. And I pondered, why can't you build the best portfolio and then move it up or down the volatility ladder? And I realized it's because you can't increase the exposure to assets often without borrowing, and that adds a borrowing cost. And then I realized, well, that's not really true in managed futures. Managed futures are very cash efficient. They trade exclusively on margin. So I should be able to build the optimum portfolio, manage the optimum portfolio, maximize the diversification, and then move it up or down the volatility chain to whatever level was most appropriate from an investor's perspective. And so, you know, those kinds of things led me to the conclusion that this is the area I want to dedicate my career to. Uh, every institution ought to have exposure to this asset class. There's tremendous room for improvement mathematical discipline, uh, creating an institutionally appropriate investment. So Ernest, that's fascinating. So we understand now your philosophy and where you're coming from. Now please explain to us, what are you offering at Efficient right now? How has your whole philosophy and approach evolved? Remarkably, uh, more has not changed than has changed. And what do I mean by that? Uh, in 1993, when I formed the CTA, we started immediately publishing daily data. Nobody published daily data in 1993. But our view is uh, you want to do your work with a mathematical discipline. And to do that, you need as many data points as possible. And in the future space, they're real data points. They're mark to market, they're liquid. It really means something. So we today continue to build portfolios based on mathematical processes of assembling return streams of managers in an optimal kind of way. What does that look like? Well, it looks like a lot of things. First, if you're going to build the best possible portfolio, you've got to know what the possible investments are. So we've, we've made a very big investment in knowing the CTA space. We have over 8,000 CTA programs in our database. Uh, we visit over 100 CTAs annually on site. Our goal is to create and maximize the unique benefits available in the CTA space. We have to use managed accounts. We have to maximize the cash efficiency. Uh, we have to look only to liquid markets. So what we do when we uh, seek a manager to, to utilize and for investment purposes is we start by getting verifiable daily return history. And we run it through mathematical models. And we say, does this profile mathematically look like a profile that has uh, institutional investment qualities to it? Then we consider how that might relate on a portfolio level. Does this manager add diversification on the portfolio level? I'm aware a lot of people in the CTA space, they just go after sort of core trend following trading. Our view of the CTA universe is it's much more diverse than that and that the only real free lunch in the financial world is diversification. And fortunately, there's a lot of it in the CTA space. Now, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, careful due diligence isn't critical. Uh, but we always say that due diligence can only disqualify a manager, can never qualify a manager. So the processes that we used on day one, getting the daily data, doing a mathematical analysis, determining the portfolio benefit, and then doing a top-down investment analysis, that all remains the same. The second part of that is that we've always viewed ourselves as a trading firm. Some people look and say, well, you're a, a multi-manager or you're a fund of funds. Well, yes, for some clients, that's the products that we provide. But the way we look at it is that we're running a portfolio that takes data streams and marries them to optimize. 
So we have factors. We have volatility factors. We have risk factors. We take into account the diversifying benefit of one manager versus another. We run all of those things real time on a daily basis. We rebalance the portfolio on a continuous basis to make sure that we're always running the maximum, the optimal portfolio. And because of the early principles we talked about, then we, we can adjust the volatility of that portfolio from a very low volatility for one investor to another investor that wants to maximize his cash efficiency and run the portfolio as at high a volatility as possible. So that's led us over time from offering one product, which was representative of our best thinking, to offering that one product at multiple volatilities and in multiple currencies, to saying we can do even more. We can offer customized products. We can build portfolios to meet specific portfolio objectives. But at the end of the day, if you take it all the way back, the same core principles exist today that existed clear back when the research was done back in 1991. Our view at Efficient is that every institutional portfolio needs exposure to managed futures. How do you get that exposure? Well, you should optimize the unique character of managed futures. What does that mean in practice? Well, one thing it means is you should utilize a very mathematical approach. You've got daily data. It's liquid. It's, it's verifiable. Take all those data points and do math. You can't do that with monthly hedge funds but you can do it in the CTA space. So analyze man managers mathematically, assemble them mathematically, and then run it like a trading portfolio. Keep it balanced, keep the risk balanced, keep the exposure balanced. And then something we haven't even talked about is then be careful to manage all of the risk properly. That goes back to my options days. You've got the data. We see every position. We see every trade. So we can run it like a real trading portfolio. We can run it like a proprietary trading desk. So looking at managed futures and investing in managed futures, what are some of the mistakes that you have seen people making when investing in this space? And also, what are maybe some of the fears and concerns that you come across when you talk about managed futures? Well, of course, you're speaking to a missionary for managed futures, but this is really an important question. I mean, I've asked myself the question, why is it if Lintner in 1983 made such a persuasive case that managed futures should be part of every institutional portfolio, why doesn't everybody have exposure to managed futures? And uh, I think there are a number of answers for that. But the answers don't come from the academics. Every couple of years, there's another article that says you ought to have exposure to managed futures. So let's dig a little more deeply into that question. I think that some mistakes people make, uh, one, they don't utilize the unique character of the managed futures space. They, they buy it just like it's another uh, hedge fund. That really throws a lot of the benefits off the table. And another thing is they don't have a realistic sense about the time frame. You know, managed futures is, is a, you know, some refer to it as a synthetic long option. You know, it, it, it doesn't make money for a bunch of time and then it makes a bunch of money. Just the opposite of hedge funds that tend to make money all the time and then all of a sudden, boom, they don't. Classic example is 2008, right? Uh, when almost every hedge fund style got crushed and managed futures made a lot of money. But people think, oh, well, I, you know, I'm going to time my investment. You can't do that. And the reason you can't do that is, you don't know when the next economic earthquake is going to come. I mean, we know there's going to be another one. We just don't know when. But on a risk-adjusted basis, managed futures have always been a good investment. People just haven't been patient long enough to experience that in many cases. So when I say that, uh, there's always this pervasive belief that somehow the world has changed. You know, managed futures had a good 08, but there's no more opportunity. Okay, they got lucky in 2014, but there's no more opportunity. The world hasn't changed. And people have to get into their mind the fact that there are just some economic realities that create trading opportunity. Now, another reason is people say, I don't see any source of return in managed futures. I mean, isn't it just some uh, machine making decisions or, or whatever? 
Well, you know, for a lot of years, people really struggled with that question. There's a lot of academic work now that says there is a measurable momentum factor, and people are actually making a point of buying core momentum. But the research has always been true. It adds, it adds value. And then people say, well, okay, I need managed futures exposure, so I'm going to buy a manager. Well, first of all, they're throwing away one of the big benefits of the space, and that's diversifying. But then they might get unlucky, and the manager they bought underperforms their peers. There is a market environment that is not good for the best manager in the world. So people need to, to, to get multiple manager diversification. You know, what happens is that at the end of the day, uh, people have to understand the strategic role that managed futures plays in their portfolio. And they have to think of it as a portfolio asset or a portfolio investment. Uh, one of my investors said to me one time when we were going through a difficult period, he called up and he said, how are you doing? And I said, well, it's not a lot of fun. He says, yeah, but how are you doing? And I said, we're staying the course. I mean, we've reviewed everything. We've reviewed our managers. All looks good. He says, I'm really glad to hear that because whenever you're struggling, I'm making a ton of money. Well, would it be that all investors thought like that, right? But I mean... The truth is, all one has to do is read the academic articles, figure out a mathematically disciplined approach to the space, develop a balanced way to, to capture the benefits, and then utilize it as a portfolio asset rather than as a standalone investment. There are, of course, as we know, a lot of companies out there that are offering access to managed futures and CTAs. What makes Efficient unique in that space? Well, I think an important, unique aspect of efficient capital is we're 100% dedicated to the CTA space. I mean, we've been in this business a long time. Uh, many people have said the industry is dead multiple times over the course of our history, and we say, no, this is a critical asset. Uh, we're going to remain 100% dedicated. And the same that's true about our, our core dedication is also true of our employees. We have a fantastic uh, group of very dedicated professionals here, but they're unique in that they've been dedicated to the CTA space. I mean, our, our CIO, our COO, our uh, chief financial officer, our general counsel, these are all people that have been in the CTA space for over 20 years. Our investment team to, has been together for many years. Why is that important? Well, it's not just the depth of knowledge of the space, uh, but we work closely with CTAs. They have to have confidence that we're working on their behalf. They've got to feel comfortable sharing confidential information and allowing us to really understand their programs. And a lot of that has to do with the relationship that the people in this firm have uh, with the CTA community. I, I would like to believe something else that's unique about Efficient is our values. We're a values-driven company. Uh, we take our values very seriously. Uh, we have four core values. They're serving, they're innovating, they're pursuing excellence, and they're honoring God, reflecting strong character. And so we'd like to uh, work hard at being recognized for putting others' needs first, for working hard to be innovative and to move uh, things forward, to work with excellence. Uh, we have an unwavering dedication to maximizing the unique uh, benefits of the CTA space. I think there are a lot of people in the CTA space. CTAs is something they do, but it's not all that they do. They run it maybe more like a hedge fund portfolio rather than capitalizing on some of the things we've talked about, like the liquidity, the cash efficiency, the transparency. So Ernest, as we have seen, you have been in the space for a while. How have many futures evolved during all that time? Well, you're right in saying, how has it evolved? Because it has evolved. And I'm, I'm going to speak to it from multiple perspectives. Let's talk about first from just the CTA perspective. You know, back uh, when I first got started in uh, 1990, 91, there was a handful of traders. They were almost all uh, systematic. I have been stunned at how much the industry has progressed. First of all, uh, think about the, imp uh, the impact of computer technology and the ability to implement uh, models 
and uh, different approaches and so on. So that's led to a whole another group of trading talent. And then as the markets themselves have moved more electronically, uh, not only did that provide a much more cost-effective access to the markets, but also a lot of people that used to be market makers and floor traders evolved from the floor and became traders. And more recently, with the implementation of the Volcker rules and uh, uh, the, the banks having to drop their proprietary trading desks, a whole new wave of traders have come into the marketplace. And CTAs have begun to realize that to be effective, they've got to be institutional. So the volatility used to be sky high. Now it's very hard to find a CTA that doesn't trade with a very controlled volatility because they realize investors want to understand well the risk that they're trading. So there's been tremendous evolution on the CTA side, which is why our database keeps getting bigger and bigger. But if you think about it from the investor side, you know, there are several things that have changed. Post-08, sort of my dream, has started to become reality in some ways. We're seeing a number of institutions actually carve out a bucket or a section of their portfolio for CTA investment. It's become clear that there's a very big difference between hedge funds and CTAs. Uh, the CHI Association does a special section just on CTAs. Some of our investors say we have a CTA allocation of X percent of our portfolio. And I think what's happening is there's a developing awareness, especially post-08, that we've got to think about this CTA space in a very different way. And as the investor community has become more engaged, ways to access the space have expanded. So now there are a lot of 40 Act mutual funds. There's the ability to access versus use its products. There's a lot more customization to meet specific portfolio objectives that are taking place in the marketplace. Uh, there's a lot of more creative ways to structure the fees, to better align traders' fees with investors' fees. And so the investor community has, in essence, created a much broader playing field for the CTA space. So how has this led to the evolution of efficient? Well, the bottom line is our, our goal is to help any investor access their exposure to managed futures in the best possible way for them, right? So what we need to do is we need to listen carefully, hear what their portfolio objectives are, and then help them tailor their exposure to the managed futures space in the best possible way. Maybe that's through a more classic fund of funds way. Maybe it's through a customized portfolio. Maybe it's through a unique structure, like a CTA multi-strat that focuses on a particular area. Or maybe an investor can't invest in CTAs because their board says no, but they could invest in a multi-manager uh, FX portfolio because it's a form of cash investment, and they can get the unique character that way. So in every aspect of the business, whether you look at the CTAs or the investors or the cost efficiencies or the structures, it's all evolved, and really, uh, the CTA industry is, I think, in its healthiest state that I've been aware of in my entire career.